Or you can't read? I'm just saying, can you read or you can't read? Yalla. Have you got the... I haven't got the book. Yeah, I'm going to take the book and I'll just... Uh, sure. in here. Get closer, guys. Get closer with you. The front row is okay. No, no, you're okay. No, 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 no. no. You can't go on the floor. Dirty. Hey, Talha, hmm? over here, man. Where are you going over there? Yeah, I'm not going to see that. There's space here. Lots of space. Lots of space. Come in to me. Come in. Here, 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 here. There's space here, man. To me. Are you cold? No. Halasta. Yeah, it's me. Sit down. Sit down. You sit down forward. Give comfort, Talha. Yes, get really warmer. Zakallah. You're going to start Zakat tonight? Very important topic. Fortunately, we don't have really a lot of people here today. Is it because I delayed the class? <laughs> okay. Ya Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil musaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa ala man tabi'a hudahum ila yawm al-deen. All praises due to Allah and my peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't know the sound is like, uh, it's been like, like this. It's not open. For verily, we're going to be, inshallah, tonight starting the book of Zakah. And the book of Zakah is not like the other chapters where the Muslim is aware a lot of the information regarding it. Like, for example, Salah. Many of you know about the Salah. We talk about Siyam. Many of you know about the Siyam. But when it comes to Zakah, so many, well, lots of, you know, it's too open. Now. It's, it's going to give me the head again. For verily, yes, that is the zakah. We find that so many Muslims are not equipped with enough information to know, first of all, if this item you pay zakah on it or not, and if it is, how much is the quantity, and if it's how much the quantity, then how long you keep it for zakah to be due on it. And how much is zakat is to be paid? All these things are the things that we're going to be discussing in the this week and the following two weeks, inshallah. Zakat, as we know, it's the pillar, one of the pillars of Islam. And the Islam is built upon how many pillars, Ya Talha? Five. Five pillars. Name one. Zakat. Name another one. Say zakah. Huh? Salah. Name another one. Saum. Three. Name another one. Uh, hajj. Hajj. Four. Can you name them? Yes. We should put it starting with the shahada. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> Before you start with the English pillar, you start with the shahada. Shahada time. So I asked Talha, he started straight away with the. What was it, Zakat? You said Zakat. No, who said it? He said it. He said what? No, you asked him how many pillars. How many pillars? Who said it? He's the one who, yeah. Money, money. Shahat. Big money. But never mind. Five pillars. Right, let's. Uh, so, this is the first uh, thing. We don't have to read it. So, we're going to be talking now some of the ahadith, the ayat regarding the encouragement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put for us in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah وسلم, regarding the Zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Meaning? Um, uh, take arms from their wealth in order to purify them and sanctify them with it. Take arms. Arms means what? Zakah. In order to what? To purify them and? Uh, to purify them and sanctify them with it. You have to put this in sort of like this, like that. Okay. Purify them and sanctify them. Right. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا أَتَيْتُمْ مِنْ رِبًا لِيَرْبُوا فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوا عِنَّ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَتَيْتُمْ مِنْ زَكَاةٍ تُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْمُضْعِفُونَ نعم. And that which you give in gift to others in order that it may increase your wealth by expecting to get a better one in return from other people's property but has no increase with Allah but that which you give in zakat seeking Allah's countenance than those they should have manifold increase. 
the manifold increase is, is all, only for the one who does the zakah, not the one who takes riba. Riba means you lend him the money, and then you expect him to give you more money when he returns the money. That's you know obvious riba, but you don't you don't want to do that. You want to give zakah for the sake of Allah. And Abu Huraira narrates that the Prophet he says, he who does give sadaqah, I mean charity or zakah, in equivalence of one date, but from a halal earning not from haram any and Allah only accept the halal earning then Allah Azza wa Jal will accept it and take it in his right and then he will raise it up just like a person he would raise up his cult is that right yes oh, is that cult it yes, says yes. yeah. until it becomes like the mountain the cult is a small horse yeah. and there's another word for it huh? Not calf, calf is a cow. Cow, cult and uh, flu. Uh, flu no, I, can't, I can't remember. I can't remember. Maybe, maybe they didn't. Right now, warning against a person who prevents zakah. Who prevents them means he does not give zakah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he says, "ولا يحسبن الذين يبخلون بما آتاهم الله من فضله هو خير لهم بل هو شر لهم سيطوقون ما بخلوا به يوم القيامة ولله ميراث السماوات والأرض." Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. Now. And let not those who covetously withhold of that which Allah has bestowed on them of his bounty think that it's good for them, and they do not pay the obligatory zakah. Nay, it will be worse for them. The things which they covetously withhold shall be tied to their necks like a collar on the day of resurrection. And to Allah belongs the heritage of the heavens and the earth, and Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. So whatever you don't pay zakah on its behalf, then on the day of resurrection, you will be circled with it. So if you don't pay the zakah of the sheep, the sheep will go onto your neck. You have to carry it. With, of course, on top of that, punishment as well. Also, Abu Huraira narrates as a hadith. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever is made wealthy by Allah and does not pay zakah on his wealth, then on the day of resurrection, his wealth will be made like a bone-headed poisonous snake with two poisonous glands. It will encircle his neck, encircle his neck, and bite his cheeks, and say, "I am your wealth. I am your treasure." After stating that, the Prophet then recited, recited the verse that we mentioned before. So here, on the day of resurrection, if you don't pay the zakah, a snake, which has got the flanks, the fangs, sorry, the fangs, and that it will lick your cheek. And uh, it will say that I am your treasure, that what you've been hoarding, and you're not even paying zakah. Also, Allah says, <laughs> to the end of the verse, meaning those who hoard up gold and silver and spend it not in the way of Allah, announce unto them a painful torment. On the day. That means hoard it, they don't pay zakah for it. On the day of resurrection, yes. On the day when the wealth will be heated in the fire of hell and wind. What is going to be heated? The gold and the silver that you've been not paying zakah. Okay, it's going to be heated. Yeah. And with it will be branded their foreheads. Their you know, branded, cauterization, burning, their head, and also their flanks and their backs. The flanks and their back, their sides and their backs. And it will be said to them. And it will be said to them, This is the treasure which you hoard for yourselves. Now taste of what you used to hoard. Right. So we have number of ayat, number of ahadith regarding those people who do not pay zakah and what sort of punishment they will have. Also Abu Huraira narrates that the Prophet وسلم, he said Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates Just continue when I said Abu Huraira Prophet وسلم, he said just continue the hadith please uh, The Prophet وسلم, said I, I said that you just uh, say the hadith okay, so, uh, <laughs> If any owner of gold or silver does not pay what is due on him when the day of resurrection would come pages of fire will be beaten out of him These will then be heated in the fire of hell and his sides, his forehead and his back will be cauterized with them Whenever these cool down, the process is repeated during a day, the day the length of which is 50,000 years, until the day, until the judgment is pronounced among the servants, and he sees whether his path is to the paradise or to the fire. So this is before he takes his uh, final verdict, whether he's going to be to paradise or going to be to hellfire. All that you're going to be heated on branded with because you did not pay the zakah for it. This is before we start the reckoning. This is before we start with Allah says to you, you're the hellfire and the paradise. Look at the punishment. Also, it was said, Messenger of Allah, what about the 
Camels. Go ahead. He replied, if any owner of camels does not pay what is due on them of it, and of his due for them is the milk on the day of or when it comes down to water, when the day of resurrection comes, a soft sandy plain will be set for him and extensive uh, as an extensive in length. He will find that not a single young one is missing. They will trample him with their ho hooves and bite him with their mouths. As often as the first of them passes him, the last of them will be made to return during the day, the length of which will be 50,000 years, until the judgment is pronounced among the servants, and he sees whether his part is to the paradise or to the fire. Look at sort of punishment it is. 50,000 years, the length of the day, in which all those camels that you did not pay the care for them, you had the care, you had to pay the care, because you, had, you, you held the number of camels, and the zakat is due. You did not pay it. So all these will be lining up, even the small young camel, and all of them will be stopping on top of you and also biting you for a day which is 50,000 years. Like how many times are going to be doing this? Allahu A'lam. This is before Allah gives the verdict. One day, because the day is as long as that. Tayyip, what is the rule and the verdict, Islamically speaking, regarding the person who does not give the zakah, he prevents the zakah? Go ahead. Zakah. Oh, let me just translate myself. As zakah from the fara'at. The consensus of the ummah. Consensus with the agreement of the scholars. The agreement of the sahaba. That it made it so necessary to know. To be known from the deen. As soon as you become a Muslim. That you have to pay zakah. So if one person had denied. The, the obligation of the zakah. Then he is a disbeliever. Okay. So he's a disbeliever. Unless he's a person who's a newcomer to the Islam, then he will be excused because of his ignorance. Can you just look at me, please? I'm not reading. I'm just translating what I... So, if this person had prevented the zakah, giving the zakah, but at the same time, he was believing that the zakah is compulsory, it's just like the person who believes Salah is compulsory, but he does not pray. That means he's going to be what? Sinned. An amazing sin. The person who believes the kai is compulsory, but yet he does not pay it, then he's like a person who does not fast and he believes in fasting. He does not pray, but he believes in praying. He does not make hajj and he believes in hajj. And the ruler and the leader, he has to take the zakah from him by force, whether he likes it or not. And not only that, if he doesn't pay it, then the ruler, he will take half of his wealth as a punishment for him, not just the zakah, Half of his wealth, half of his capital will be gone as a punishment for that person. Type. If a group of people did not pay the zakah and they have refuted and they have prevented the governor to take the zakah from them, then they will be fought for that. And that would happen at the time of Abu Bakr. At the time of the apostasy, some of those people had... Uh, gone apostate kafir after becoming Muslim. Some of them they did not become apostate, but they were preventing to give the zakah. And they said, We're not going to give the zakah. So Abu Bakr said, I'm going to fight them. And Umar said, How can you fight them? They say, La ilaha illallah. But they don't pay the zakah because they don't want to pay it. He said, No, 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 no. I will fight them for the sake of even anak, which is like a tether that is the goat to be tied with. That they used to give it as a zakat to the Prophet. They prevent me to do it. They will prevent me to give it to me. And I will fight them for that. So the group of people decided not to pay the zakat. The governor is allowed to send an army for them. Fight them to force them to pay the zakat. And as I said, the person who does not pay the zakat, the governor will take half of his money, half of his money, as a punishment for that. Upon whom the zakat is compulsory. The zakah is compulsory upon every Muslim who is free, so it's not compulsory upon the non-Muslim. The non-Muslim would pay a tribute in the Islamic State, tax. And he's free, so the, the, the one who is slave, there's no zakah on him because he's a property of his master. And by the way, when I'm talking about the slave, you don't know what I'm talking about because you've never seen a slave and you don't really experience what is a slave in your mind. And the one... So he's a Muslim, he is free, and the one who is holding the threshold, and Nisab, this is a particular amount of money, or camels, or horses, oh, sorry, or, or sheep, 
Okay, for, and that capital, that number, if you reach it, then you'll pay the zakat from. <coughs> and he says, it is up due upon the person who owns that capital, except for harvest. Sorry, sorry, and it is a threshold which is being held for one year, being paid up by the one who is the owner of that capital, as long as he holds that capital for what? For one year. So whether it is whether it is gold or silver or banknotes, whether it is cattles from the sheep and the goats or the camels or the cows, okay, for one year. So the threshold to hold it for one year. If it goes below the threshold, there's no zakat. Except for the plants, the agriculture, the, the, the plants, the crops, I should say. Or well, the zakat is due on it when you harvest it. If it reaches a certain amount of weight, then you pay zakat on it once you harvest it. So the harvest can take place once every two years. It could be taking place twice a year, depending upon what is the crop that you're harvesting. Allah says, Give the due zakat of it, the day that you harvest it. The type of wealth that you pay zakat on, it's not everything that you pay zakat. So if you've got millions of chairs, like the one you're sitting on them, it's not zakat on them. Or million of carpets, or million of water bottles, okay? <coughs> what type of zakat? Where, where, where are, what are the items that if I comprise a threshold, if I get a threshold, and I get it for one year, that I have to pay zakat for? He says they are in the two currencies, gold and silver. Gold and silver, and what is similar to gold and silver, which is banknotes. So there's no zakat on something which is not gold or silver, even if it is expensive. Pearls, more expensive than gold, because they take them from where? From the sea. And the Prophet told them, there's no zakat on that pearls. Jewelries which is not talking gold or silver, like rubies, like platinum, like, okay, all of these uh, diamonds, more expensive, much more expensive than gold, but the reason is okay. So only what? Gold and silver. And what is related to gold and silver is the bank, the money, currency. Because it's been used as a substitute for the gold and the silver. And from the crops, that is, uh, we're going to be talking about, there are crops that you pay the cow on, like they are, we're going to come to it, and that is the barley, don't worry about anything, we're going to come to it, it's going to be barley, and the wheat, and the grapes, which is raisins, um, so the, um, um, uh, dates. and dates. And the dates. And the cattle, which is the camels and the cows and the sheep, as we're going to see, inshallah. And the rikaz, the treasure which is found, uh, being hidden by the people of Jahiliyyah. There is a zakat on that, which you call it a treasure. And that is, you find it on the ground, dug or being buried. You're not going to find that in this country. Okay, you find it in the countries where the Jahiliyyah before used to be residing. Tay. Let's talk about this in details. First, zakat, the gold and the silver. Al-Nisab wal wajib. What is the threshold and how much you pay? The zakat threshold, so the zakat threshold, I mean the, the, the amount that you have to hold in order for the zakat to be compulsory and due, and that is 20 dinar. Now, we don't have the dinar now at the moment. I'm not talking about Jordanian dinar or whatever currency of dinar. This is a dinar of gold, which is known in its weight. We're going to be discussing. And as, and by the way, you have to write that down because it has, you haven't got it here. An 80, uh, the, the 20 dinars is equivalent. Each dinar is equivalent to one, sorry, 4.25 grams of 24 carats of gold. Each gram, each dinar, sorry, each dinar of gold is equivalent to 4.25 
okay, grams of 24 carats, because the gold is in carats. Carats means the purity of the bone. The purest of the gold is 24 carats. For those who don't understand that, women on the other side, sisters, they will understand straight away. Brothers are hopeless for this. They know nothing. They just buy for they don't know anything. Okay? Gaon is of purity. So 24 carats is the purest. And the less it goes down, the more impure it will become. So 22 carats less pure than the 24. And then we have the 21. And also we have 18. We have as well 12. We have the 9 carats. 9 carats is not even gold. It's just more metal than gold. Okay? So we're talking about now the pure gold. 24 carats. So each dinar <coughs> of gold equivalent in weight to 4.25 grams of 24 carats of gold. So if I said 20 dinars, how much is that equivalent to? To see the threshold. Once you have that threshold for one year, then you have to pay zakah. How much is the threshold? Multiply 20 by 4.25. How much is that? 85. So it is 85 grams of 24 carats of gold. Once you have 85 grams of 24 carats of gold, for one year, you pay the cash. The cash, how much? I will tell you in a minute. Now, what about the 22 carats and the 21 carats and the 2019 carats? We will say, okay, now you will see how much is the 85 gallon grams of gold of 24 carats. How much is it worth from the 21? That's a threshold. How much is from the 22? That's a threshold. How much is from the 18? That's a threshold of the 18. So definitely the 85 grams of the 24 carats, much more uh, uh, than the, the, the 18. The 18 could be, you need about maybe 150, 130 grams of 18 carats of gold to equalize so the uh, 24, 20, um, 24 carats of gold. Okay, so the um, how can I do it simple? Just work out how much is in money is worth is the 85 gram gold. And the, by the way, this is the threshold for your currency. So how much money uh, if I have to have in order for zakat to be due? So I multiply now 85 grams into the price of the gram of the gold nowadays. So actually, the threshold goes up and down. So if I go to my... Now you've got applications, mashallah, very easy. Live. Gold Live is called. Very good. It's called all the commodities here. Um, gold, silver, and everything. And it gives me everything that I need in grams and everything. So here, this is in per gram. How much is the gold? So if I say here... Okay. Right. I've got it in British pound and I've got it in dollars. That's per gram. Right. You know, becoming very hard to me to see these days. Right, it is <clears throat> come on. That's it. Thirty-three pounds seventy-eight. So you make it thirty-three pounds. Be on the safe side. So I'll multiply now. Thirty-three multiply by how much? Eighty-five. Two thousand eight hundred and five pounds. So once you have 2,800 pounds, and you kept it for one year, it doesn't go down below that number. At the end of that year, Islamically speaking, the year has to be a lunar year. Because the solar year is about 10 days more than the lunar year. So if you tie up yourself for the Islamic month, like to say, for example, Shawwal, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be in Ramadan. It depends upon when did you start your threshold. So once you reach the 2,800 pounds and you kept it for one year, then your zakat is due. 
How much is zakah? 2.5%. So, this person, he kept three, uh, okay, kept 10,000 pounds from the beginning of the year at the end of the year. How much zakah should he pay? Come on, mathematicians. Yes, 250 pounds. Because each 1,000 is 25 pounds. It's 2.5%. Each 1,000, 25 pounds. Is that, is that difficult? You said 2.5%. Is that difficult to say? Every thousand, you pay 25 pounds. Yeah, 1,000 multiplied by 2.5%. That's 25 pounds, okay? So it is 5,000. How much is that? Yalla? 5 multiplied by 25. That's 125. Yes? 4,000 is 100 pounds. Yes? Everybody? Okay. All right. So this person, he had 10,000 pounds from the beginning of the year. And this 10,000, somehow, in the, just about the 11th month, went down to 2,000. And then the 12th month, gone back to 10,000. How much the cash did he pay? Nothing. So 11 months, he kept the 10,000. But in the 11th month, he went down below what? The threshold. The threshold is at 2,800. He went to 2,000. So below 2,800, he knows the cap. So when it's come back to 10,000, we'll start counting again. What about if this person is, person is saving and his, his saving is increasing? So there's a scenario, number one, which is a scenario that we said he kept the threshold, but before the year of the end, in the end of the year, he became less than the threshold. There's no zakat. Start again when he gets the threshold. Second scenario. This person, he started with 10,000 at the beginning of the year. And he kept saving every month. 1,000. Second month, 1,000. How many are you going to add? 12,000. Because every month, he's going to add 1,000. So he's going to add 12,000. Plus the 10,000 he had, 22,000. Correct? So how much is the cash that he paid? 250. Because it hasn't been 12 months. Right. Yeah, correct. But then he has to pay on the following month the extra 1,000 he had paid. Because it would be for one year. Mm. Isn't it true? Because when he added one month in the first month, so when he started... Yeah, yes, one year it will be zakat for the 10,000, but the following month will be zakat for the 11,000. The following month will be zakat for the 12,000. Because you're going to get a year for each one. Hmm, getting them crazy. Well, I told you, I told you, 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 you got money, maybe you haven't got any money, that's why you're not really worried. <laughs> for those who tell them, yeah, 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 yeah. Either you're going to do it like that, or you're going to do it the better way, which is for the fourth person. If your money goes up, this is second year, all the time, you pay the zakah on the maximum that you got at the end of the year. So you pay the zakah on the what? The 22. 22. The 22. In that case, you have made zakah for all of them. Is that only if it goes up and it never goes down? I'm, I'm, I'm very clear. Please. Because you're going to confuse. So, first scenario, we said... Person's money, 10,000. Somehow, during the year, it went down below the threshold, the 2,000, gone up, there's no zakah. We start counting once it gets threshold again. Second scenario is going up all the time. Third scenario. So, this started with 10,000. Second month, 15,000. Third month, 14,000. Seventh month, let's say. 18,000 and at the end of the year 10,500 how much is that? No, 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 sir. I mean less 8,000 how much is the cash should be paid for what? 8,000 because those they never lost it the other ones they're not going to be increasing they're going to finished so they're going to be paying for the 8,000 do you understand that? So he says, the person Thursday night is going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down until, so you go to the minimum. So you take the minimum figure, you make zakah. What is the other one? Because you're going up, 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 up all the time. You go to the what? The maximum. 
That is better. Unless you're going to do every year, every month, at a different threshold. Every month, a different threshold. So the first year, uh, in the first month, if the first year, they're going to be paying for the 10,000. And then the following month, they're going to be for the 11,000. Do you understand me? That's going to be a headache for you. <laughs> that's the best. And that's how you tackle your issue. Time. Silver. How much is the threshold for the silver? It says here 200 dirham. 200 dirham. Now I need to know how much each dirham weighs in grams. Because these days we don't have dirhams of silver. We have grams of silver. And it's been weighed. Alhamdulillah. Each gram of silver weighs two point. You're going to write these things. Nine seven five. Two point nine seven five. If I multiply that number by 200 dirham, I will end up with the threshold 595 grams of silver. So now I've got the threshold of the gold and the threshold of the silver. So why did you, why did I measure the money and he gave me the threshold of the gold, not the silver? The scholar said, if he gave the threshold of the silver, then this, it will not be good for the poor. And plus, most of the currencies are based to be equivalent to the gold, not to the silver. Do you understand that? And I'll give you what I'm saying here. Like for, for example, if I go to my program here again, the silver. Do you know how much is the silver for each gram? You won't believe it. 38 pence. That's how low it is. It was one day three pounds, I remember. 38 pence. That's how cheap it is. It's just like, it's like cheaper than potatoes. <laughs> I remember a friend, he was working in, in, in silver, and he buys any. Well, lie, he reached three pounds, I remember. Not 38 pence. And the gold, it reached 36 pounds, and it reached 18 pounds, I remember. 18 pounds is 16 pounds, 17 pounds. Last year, 25, 26, 24. It's probably go up and down. So the silver, if I'm going to put for the grams, there's a 595 grams multiplied by 38 pence. <laughs> okay, that's not good for the rich person. The threshold will be the Yunusami. It's not good for the rich person. Because if you're going to multiply 595 by 50 pence, okay, that's about 300 pounds, less than 300 pounds. So every time you have 300 pounds, I'm going to pay the cat. <laughs> you're going to be running out of money. <laughs> so it is equivalent to the gold. The threshold is to the gold, not to the silver. <coughs> Everyone understands that? Okay, very good. So we've got one dinar of gold is equivalent to 4.25 grams of 24 carats of gold. And one gram of, and one dirham of silver is equivalent to 2.975 of grams of silver. Silver, by the way, hasn't got any grading, 24 and 22 carats and all of that. Time. Jewelry. A woman, she's got gold, but she's not getting, you know, she's not keeping it for buying and selling. She wants to beautify herself with the gold. You know, the women, they like to beautify themselves with gold. Gold is for them gold. Now, do you pay the cat or not? Yes, you pay the cat. And he who says there's a pay the guy, he's got no proof whatsoever. And the proof is in the opposite. So the Prophet, so I sell them, he told them, sell them. He said that you pay zakah on those gold jewelries. When the Prophet Allah entered upon Aisha, and he saw in her hands, in her fingers, like a, a ring, which has no um, pearl in it. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu he said, uh, uh, by the way, it's a ring from, from silver, yes. What is this Aisha? She said, Messenger of Allah, I beautify myself with it. She said, do you give the zakah for it? She said, no, Messenger Allah. He said, well, this is going to be the reason for you to go to the fire, hellfire. Hasbukin na, so fear the hellfire. So even that jewelry was made of silver, 
and it's being made for jewelry, not for buying and selling, you have to pay the zakat on that once it reaches its threshold. Right. The zakah of the crops. The zakah of the crops is only in four types. And the ones I mentioned before, and that's wheat, barley, dates, and raisins. There's no zakah on anything apart from that. The raisins is made of grapes, the grapes. Um, so there's no zakah in cucumber or peaches. Or mangoes. Okay? There's no zakah except on those four items. What is the threshold in, for the crops? Threshold is what we call it khamsatu awsuk. Khamsatu awsuk. Five awsuk. What is the awsuk here? Each wisk is, you have to write that down. Maybe, it's got, maybe you've got that in your footnotes. Uh, that one maybe got your footnotes. And five, each wusp is 60 sa'a. So how many sa'a? Five multiplied by 60. How much is that? 300. So 300 sa'a. So what is the sa'a? The sa'a is four handfuls. Four handfuls. So how many handfuls? So if you multiply four by 300, 1,200. Do you understand? 1,200. Handfuls. I'll give it to you in kilos. If we said, like before, remember the cattle footer, each size equivalent to two and a half kilos, multiply two and a half kilos, okay, by 60. Each size, we said 60 size, isn't it? And each size. It's supposed to be 695 kilograms. I'm okay, I'm second. Not, no, no. Each four size. What am I talking about? Or each four handful. So each four handful. Uh, sa, sa, four handfuls. Two point. Okay, let me just do the calculator here. 695 divided by. No, I'm, 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 I'm wrong. Sorry about that. Five awsuk is all of it equivalent to 60 sa. Do you understand me? Okay. So the five awsuk, so the 60 sa is the threshold. Do you understand? It's not 300. So five awsuk. So each wusk is 12 sa. Okay? I made a mistake. Right. So if it is the case, 60... So I multiply by 2.5. 60 sa. No, I'm, I'm wrong again. I'm gonna let me just skip. let me revise my information. I am I am not really sure for that. 695. I know it's in kilograms. Divided by five. 139. Divided by 60. Yeah, I'm sorry. Again, it is actually here. Five. Each wisp is 60. It's 60 size 300 again. And it's 2.3 kilos here is being measured from the wheat and the barley. So if you 2.3 multiply by 300 gives me 690. So put in total the five also is equivalent to almost 690 kilograms, whether it is wheat, barley, or raisins, or dates. And by the way, these numbers, um, because we don't use them a lot, we don't have harvest, and that is why we find ourselves rusty regarding the information. We have to revise, basically. And for the gold and the silver, I know it because we keep using gold and silver and money. But we need to do in our own coming to the animals, I have to revise because the information is not being used because we don't have cattle to go and give the cat on, on camels and how many camels it is due. There are numbers there. If I'm going to teach each other numbers within the land extent to be time, that will be a mathematic games, math game. 
regarding the kettles. We're going to play the gap game, inshallah. <laughs> so we're going to imagine that you are a farmer and you've got, you, know, you own some sort of certain number of cows and all of that. How much are you going to be paying zakah on behalf of those camels and cows and sheep? طيب. So we got five awsuq. Each wusq is 60 sa'a. Makes it 300 sa'a. Each sa'a is 2.3. Makes it 695 or 690 kilograms. The threshold of the crops. There's here a title. It says khas and nakhil wal means prediction, predicting the weight uh, of the palm, of the um, dates and the raisins. Yes? Uh, dates and grapes. Is that one? Yeah. Is that prediction or prediction? Estimation. estimation, yeah. To estimate. Basically, the people who are planting grapes or planting uh, dates, you know, um, they, they, they want to, to eat from it. Okay? So maybe they don't want to, to wait until it's ripened. So they want to eat from it. So... That's where the estimation comes in. So the governor will send someone to see and estimate how much is in your trees. And then he will go, khalas. So you can eat whatever you like now. Do you understand that? Because some people, they like it not to be ripened. Some of them half ripened and all of that. So that came just to, you know, as a, a, a comfort and relaxation and a concession for the people. So the governor will, khalas. That's it. Estimate this is you've got 2,000 kilos of dates. So, this is your dates now you could eat whether it's ripened or not ripened. He will estimate. It's called khars. Cattle, inshallah, for next week. Uh, two weeks time. Two weeks time. Cattle. Right. Now we come to your session, which is your question, inshallah. Any questions, please? Go ahead. I need uh, next time to um, teach you in a different room. Or you could bring me the board, which is upstairs. Bring me the board here. Yeah, there's a board. You remember that one which stands there? You remember? Yeah, remember? Of course, we're we're teaching Quran. Yeah. Flipboard. Flipboard. Oh, yeah. I was teaching Quran last week. I forgot where I was. Yeah, I where I was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we bring it downstairs here. Yeah, no problem. And I'll put it in the middle where the sisters can see as well. Yeah. And we'll play the game of uh, numbers for the cattle, inshallah. Fine. Any questions? I'm sure that you should have any questions. Because if you don't, I'm going to add you some information which is as well as important. Now, nah, father. Investing in commodities. <coughs> Is it, am I allowed to uh, buy and sell gold? No. Or silver? No. Because gold and silver it has to be with gold and silver. And you're buying it with what? With banknotes, with, with paper. So trading it, not allowed, but to buy for your sake of your own usage and consumption, no problem. But to trade in it is not allowed. Yeah, let me um, When you said uh, when you're working out um, the 2.5 percent, which yeah. is 2,000, and I think you divided by um, how much the money is, uh, how much gold costs in money now. If it changes over the year, would you work it out then, or what it was before? The threshold, you mean? Yeah. Well. That is basically in the threshold, normally it will not fluctuate that much in one year, normally. But let's say it is a bad scenario where we have a fluctuation. So your threshold was that each gram of gold was costing 33 pounds like now. So the threshold was 2,800. Somehow, second month, it, the, the gold price dropped so it became 20 pounds for gram. Let's say, worst scenario, war came in or something. Okay, the gold became 20 pounds. So actually, war make the gold up. Uh, we don't make it down, it makes the paper down. <laughs> so there's something that happened, that the, the gold can price come down. So the threshold now will not be 2,000. It will be what? Much more than that. Do you understand? Because the gold is what the gold. 
So if you, it would be less much of that, less than that. Because each gram of gold now costing 20 pounds. So 20 pounds would be about 85. That's about 1,700. Whereas the threshold before was about 2,000 and 800. So now you're going to be saying that, oh, my money is already on the threshold. So because of 2,800, it's already, it's not going to make a difference in the, how much the guy is going to be paying, 2.5%. But if the gold price gone up, then the threshold may be, you're holding 2,800, you're on the edge. Price gold gone up to 40 pounds a gram. So it becomes now 40 grams, it's about 80. You've gone for more than 3,000. So you're having over 3,000, so you don't have that base again. Okay? So if you are below the threshold, the new threshold, there is no zakat to be paid. Now, uh, do you have to pay money on uh, a loan that you give to someone, uh, say if that's above the threshold? Okay, we're going to be talking about money on loans because this is the uh, very good question. And if we look after we finish this, there will be zakat on the debts. But because of, and we'll, to give to whom to give the zakat as well. But actually, we have to add these things. Very important. So what, if I am up alone, if I've lent somebody money, then this money is of two types. Either you lent it to someone who, we call it a person that, khalas, he's taking the money, he dream to get it back. We call it the dead debt. Dead debt. It's dead. Brother, give me the money, inshallah, tomorrow. Tomorrow has been... <laughs> For the last 20 years. Inshallah <laughs> tomorrow. That one you don't give zakat. You don't really give zakat. You don't add it to your money. Unless he pays it. Once you pay it, now the scholar is different. Do you pay zakat for one year? Or zakat for the previous years? Zakat for one year. As for the debt which is alive, you know, he's going to give it to you in one year. And you know he's going to give it to you. And this is like banking your money. You have to pay the car on it. It's like banking your money. You bank your money with your brother. You saved it for your brother. You pay the car on it. So what about the person who had l borrowed the money? As he pays the car on that money? So the money would be now being the car from the owner and the one who borrowed it. We see if that person borrowed the money and he did not use it and he kept it with him for one year, he has to pay the car as well then. Why did he borrow it in the first place? But if you have used it, khalas, there's no zakat on it. Only the person who owns it is the one who pays zakat. Very well done. I'm impressed with that question. So you said you can't trade in gold, so you can't buy gold cheap and sell it at a higher price. I said you can't trade in gold. You can't buy cheap gold and buy it at a high price. You can't then, pay cheap silver and buy it at a high price. Yeah, you can't buy gold when it's cheap. And sell it when it's high. As I said, you can't trade in gold. So, can you invest in gold? Like some people, they invest their money in gold because, like that's, you said, that's called the same thing. Because you know, like money fluctuates, they can lose, the money loses money. It's like yeah, if you want to keep your money in gold, that's different. Yeah, can you, that's like an investment. If you're trading, that's different as well. Yeah, so if it's an investment, like I say, I want to invest in gold and keep it so my money doesn't go up and down, so that's secure money. Yeah, but this is to do with if your currency as bad as these Africans and. Oh. South American, those are the countries see what you really use, they go zero. And yeah, yeah. Not when you have a strong pound. Like over here. Pound has gone down because of the Brexit. <coughs> yeah. And this uh, government is going. Well, they say a lot place. of rich people, that's what they do. They buy, they have some money, they have some gold, they have some silver. And yeah, but you, you, as long as you can, you, the people working to buy and sell, like opening a shop and yeah. buying gold, and sell, they're not allowed to do that. Yeah. According to Sheikh Al Albani, Allah. Very good question. Fadl. Uh, what if you have a bit of gold that is face value is worth more than the actual weight of the gold? Because the, the gold value, like he uh, says, let's say it's 22 carats and he's got 15 grams. If he multiply 15 grams by the price of the each gram, it would be much less the actual thing because this is a necklace where it's been manufactured in a way. That's what you say? Yeah. Okay. We actually, we are governed by the price of that item regardless of how many grams it is. So if the, the minimum is the grams, it's going to be less than the grams, okay? But sometimes that gold as well, uh, you, when you want to sell it, you lose that manufacturing bit of it. Do you understand me? So it'd be made a necklace. We don't want a necklace. We want to melt it and make it something else. 
Yeah, yeah. So he leaves that, he leaves that bit between. Yeah. Okay. So we are attached to how much is the gold? Okay. How much is the gold worth? Regardless of how many grams. Now we gave the grams which is to know the threshold of the money. So 85 grams, it will work, it will be paying. Uh, so we've got 85 grams as a threshold. That's 85 grams is worth more I've got than if I multiply the grams into money. I will pay on the money. Or I could pay in gold. I don't have to pay for money. So 85 grams, I'm going to be paying 2.5% off from the gold. Do you understand me? So if it's 100 grams, I'll pay how much? 2.5 grams. I'll give a call, 2.5 grams. So how much is that worth in money? Do you understand me? That's how it is. How much is in money? I'll give it. Nah. Father. So if anybody has a house, then uh, that is coming to uh, rent from the house. It doesn't actually matter. Rent or not rent? Because it's, did you save that rent or you used it? You took the rent and you, buy, you bought kebab and <laughs> some petrol. You use it. So there's no, no zakah on that. The zakah only on the savings, actually. On the savings, yes. you're going to keep asking the question, I don't know. I understand, but if end of the year, that much money he saved from the rent house. You did not receive it, Akhi. Only when you receive it, becomes yours. So this person gives you monthly, so you receive it in the month. This person gives you a year, you haven't owned it until you have received it. It's not a loan, this is a rent. A rent is his money, it's not yours. Once it's in your hand, it becomes yours, isn't it? Yeah. Do you understand me? Yeah. So this person did not give you 10 years of rent. Well, I'm going to be paying the cap for 10 years without receiving receive money. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand me? Yeah. So I, I, it has to be the savings. So if you took the money yeah. from the rent and he saved it, then you zakat. Because and I know the question why it's lingering because you've heard something which is there's a zakat even on trade, there's a zakat on your shop, and there's a zakat on your car, and there's a zakat on your land, and there's a and there's no proof for that. And so widely being adopted by scholars, I respect that. But there's no proof. Where is Urul Tijaz or Zakat? There is no proof. Allah did not burden us. If you know, we are people who are, uh, you could say, simple and illiterate. That's what we started. So when a person has a shop, he's not being asked by Allah to go and count how many, uh, how many matches he's got and how many <laughs> little things. And, I think about these computers that like, these days, mashallah, he knows how much is gone and how much has been taken. Simple shops we are. We don't expect people to be like McDonald's and you know how, how they're very good in calculation. They don't have. They don't calculate everything. So every year has to make jardu. Jardu means every item. Oh, it's a headache. So we say we pay not zakat, general sadaqah. General sadaqah. Whenever we feel stingy, we pay sadaqah. To pay zakah, that is to count how much is the items in my shop. Zakah is on the gold, silver, and the, which is equivalent to the, the currency. There's no zakah on the rubies, no zakah on the diamonds, even it's more expensive. Yeah, there is zakah on camels, but I'm asking which is more expensive the horse or the camel? Camel. Oh. <laughs> what a Moroccan you are. <laughs> <laughs> One horse can cost a million, yeah. One million, one one horse. What about red camel? Even it's a red camel or blue camel. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> red camel the horse for racing, good. you know how much is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah they yeah. exaggerate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Millions. Yeah. <laughs> a horse for racing. Camel racing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about any horses. I'm not talking about a horse which is not can't even walk. <laughs> no, a horse which is for race. Yeah, they're, oh, they're money. Very money, big money, 100,000 plus. Yeah. Big money they are. There's no zakah on the horses. But there's zakah on the sheep. There's no zakah on the rabbits. There's no zakah on the chicken. Okay. There's no, Allah just made it like this. Zakah on the camels and the likes. What is the camels and the likes? The camels and what is equivalent to a camel in some of the countries is called camel. I'll give you an example. Llamas. It's a camel. You know, they heard about the llama? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a camel. It looks like a camel. And the cows and the likes. Buffaloes. That's a cow. Family of the cow. And the sheep and the likes. Because maha, very beautiful sheep. 
معه سبب كثير ما شاء الله and this is a cow but there's no zaka on deers no zaka on lions no zaka on zoos <laughs> a zoo no zaka on parrots huh <laughs> <laughs> Got a parrot here. There is a zakah on honey, which we're going to be talking about, inshallah, as well. Honey. Honey is zakah. Because at the time, the Prophet is zakah. How is zakah? If you've asked the government to protect it for you. But if you didn't ask the protection for it, then it's a, an, it's a fly. It goes wherever it wants. We're not going to tax that fly. So if you ask for protection, so, but then, so if it's your land, no problem. If it's uh, and if it's in the mountains, no problem. But if you ask the government in the mountain, but please keep it for me as my I want to look after it. It's my then you pay zakah. Okay. Nah. And by the way, the crops. We have talked about the crops yet. We haven't talked about. It. Yeah, yeah. The crops, it's zakah. How much? We haven't really mentioned. We said the, the crops of the money. Did we have you said the crops of the, of the crops? The, have we got, did we talk about it? Yeah, we did. Yeah. How much? 690 kg, isn't it? Yeah, but that's a threshold. We haven't really, uh, we, we jumped one chapter here, a little chapter, so a little title. How much do you pay? We said 2.5% from the money. You got. Remember, gold. how much do you pay from that if it's above 690 kilograms? How much do you pay? Now, that depends upon the crops, if it is to be irrigated or to be rain. Do you understand? So if your crops is based upon the rain, then you pay double what you pay if you have yourself irrigated the land. Okay? How much? 1 over 10 if it's by the rain. Tenth. And over 20, if you paid it, if you have yourself spend money to, you know, put the pipes and all of those. So, 10th and 1 over 20. What about if it's got rain and plus I'm irrigating? So you take the average. 1 over 15. Average. Okay? So sometimes you rain and sometimes... All you pay... Well, you, ca you calculate how much you get from the kilograms and you deduct from that how much money you spent for piping and all of that and irrigating. Now. What if you irrigate with a river? Or? The river is, is from Allah Azza wa Jal. You don't pay anything from your pocket. But sometimes the government, they would tax you for raising the river. You would be surprised. But I went to one of the towns, I can't remember which one. And I was looking at it these days when I, when I filmed it. They've got this a special, uh, there's a, it was a peak, like a mountain. And people go to the top, they live, and they go to the bottom. And for, but the, the mountain, the, 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 uh, the, the, of course they've got roads, but there's shortcut. And that is uh, like a cabinet. And it goes onto the mountain using like a, a cable, strong one. And there's two cabinets on both sides. One goes up and one goes down. And the idea is that the man who had invented it is using water. So that one of them will fill up water and it will be heavy and will pull the one other one up. And while it's going, it will disload and discharge some water until, do you understand me? Until it goes to the top. So Muhammad, mechanically speaking, is ingenious. Mashallah. Very good. I was in one of them and was asking the person who is loading the people, come in, come in, you know, and then he locks the door and we go down. So I asked them, you know, is this a private company? He said, yes, private company. So you're doing very well because you are using free water. You've got the, the, the sea. So no, the government sees us, charges us for the sea. <laughs> <laughs> they charge us as well for the sea. Subhanallah. <laughs> Which is my water they laid down there? No, they charge it for us as well. Unbelievable when I heard this. Unbelievable. Bye. One more question. Go ahead. Uh, can I pay advanced zakah? Very well done. That's so what we'd like to switch like this. Can I pay advanced zakah? You can. But as long as that your threshold or your sorry, your capital 
that you have said at the end of the year is not more than what you expected. So you have paid, for example, for 10,000, but at the end of the year you've been, mashallah, you made a fortune of 20,000, so you pay the rest, the remaining. And if you have gone down and you paid more than what you thought you're going to be getting this, but you were less capital at the end of the year, can't go and ask the poor people, give me my money back. <laughs> okay. So what you could pay it before, but you cannot pay zakah before threshold. You could pay the zakah if it's threshold and before it's due. So if you reach the threshold, please listen to this. You got the 2,800. And before the end of the year, you want to pay for that zakah. So you got 5,000. You pay the zakah, no problem. 2.5%. But if you haven't got the threshold, and you got 2,000 pounds, and you paid zakah on the 2,000 pounds, there's no zakah on the 2,000 pounds. So once it goes to 3,000, don't count that zakah of yours that is being paid from that 3,000. You have to start. It's like praying before the sun rises. Praying, sorry, before, be, be, praying uh, let's say, dhuhr, and the sun hasn't gone to dhuhr. Praying Isha before Isha comes in. You can't. So you can't pay the zakah. You could pay sadaqah. But you can't, can't deduct that as a zakah. Okay? Is that understood? Hopefully you understood it. Heavy dose for you. Yeah, I know you're dozing as well. Are you rich? Me? Yeah? You don't have to worry then. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry. <laughs> Some people perform the pay zakah by commodity, like uh, clothes. You can't pay zakah uh, except by the item of the zakah unless the poor person agrees. So if I've got sheep, I have to pay my zakah for the sheep. But if the, 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 the poor person can give me money for the sheep, no problem. But I can't give him money if he wants sheep. Okay, my zakah, for example, is currency. I can't give him gold unless he agrees to give him gold. My currency is silver. I have to give him silver. But if he agrees to give it me money, I'll give it him money. Do you understand me? Yes. But building, uh, make a house for them? No, no, no. We're going to talk about that. You cannot, this is the zakah is to be given to them. They could do whatever they want. This is their money. It's not for you to decide what to do with it for them. It's their money. It's not your money. It should be working in the Allah's world. This is Allah belongs to Allah. So this is what you pay to Allah as a tax. So you're not allowed to basically to say, okay, Mr. Poor Man, you've got no fridge, this is a fridge for you. Part of the colony. Sorry, I don't want to buy fridge. I want to buy fairy liquid. It's up to me. You can't force me to do what you want me to do. Huh? I like fairy liquid, by the way. <laughs> Any questions? Go to the sisters and ask them. No questions. Yeah? Yeah. No questions? They understand better than you go. Yeah. Is, uh, so who, who's responsible for the wife's jewelry to pay to the guy? Is the husband? Oh, look at that question now. <laughs> who's responsible for paying the zakah on behalf of the jury that my wife enjoyed? <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's the owner. But if her husband wants to be nice, paying the zakah on his behalf, mm -hmm. And remember, if you pay the zakat on the jury and not from the jury itself, then you're going to end up paying every year the, the same amount. But if you deduct from the jury, then the following year it will be paying less zakat because you have deducted from the jury. So, you, for example, you took two grams of it. Yeah. So the following year you'll be paying on less grams until it becomes less than the threshold. I don't, think, I don't think the wife will let you do that. <laughs> so then if the lady hasn't, she has to pay it, but she has no money, she, she has no money and her husband doesn't want to pay it, she has to sell. Sell the jewelry. To okay. sell from her jewelry in order to pay, the... pay that as a cap. No. Very good questions. I like your questions, mashallah. Go ahead. Don't, don't uh, you scratch said your head. Treasure. Uh, huh? Is that treasure? Does yeah. that include like, artifacts? And... By the way, what time is the prayer? Now. Yeah. now Subhanakallah, bihamdik. I showed this.